medalist at the 1976 Olympics, then won his first 15 pro fights before stepping into the ring in March 1981 against former light heavyweight champion Marvin Johnson. With one punch in the fourth round, he catapulted himself into a title shot against WBA light heavyweight champion Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. This was a grueling fight for the first 11 rounds, but a combination in round 12 dropped the champion, and Spinks went on to capture a unanimous decision and the title. He then scored KOs in his first five title defenses, but the match the public demanded and got took place in March of 1983 between Spinks and then WBC champion Dwight Muhammad Kawi. Here, he used reach, hand speed, and above all, an accurate left jab to unify the light heavy crown. Two years later, he moved up to challenge IBF heavyweight titleist Larry Holmes. And at the end of 15 chaotic rounds, Michael Spinks awaited the decision of the judges in Las Vegas. For the winner, by unanimous decision, and new IBF heavyweight champion of the world, Michael Spinks. He had become the first light heavyweight champion in history to move up and capture a heavyweight crown. After retaining the IBF title in a controversial rematch with Holmes, Michael stopped Norwegian Stefan Tankstad in the fourth round in his last fight, thus setting up the match with Jerry Coon. First 24 professional opponents with 20 knockouts before stepping in against former champion Ken Norton in May 1981. 54 brutal seconds into round one. It was all over for Norton. 13 months passed before the much ballyhooed battle between Cooney and WBC champion Larry Holmes, a fight in which Jerry started well, then seemed too preoccupied by the longer championship distance and didn't fight his fight. By the 13th round, an exhausted and battered Cooney was finished. He fell into a period of deep personal depression, quit once more May 1986 against the lightly regarded Eddie Gregg and demonstrating at least that at this level of competition the old punching power was still there the 86 second demolition of greg made cooney a marketable contender again though in five years he had spent fewer than seven rounds in the ring without headgear and none of that against a strong opponent dollars tops scalpers lined up on the boardwalk outside and did business with a willing walk-up crowd the assembled press corps brought full representation from both coasts. Liberal selection of celebrities dotted the crowd. Boxing champs Mike Tyson and Sugar Ray Leonard sat shoulder to shoulder. Legendary jockey Angel Cordero Jr. made the ride down from New York City. So did Donald Trump, financial backer of the fight. Up from Miami, Vinny Testaverde. So was Don Johnson. Arnold Lewis Cream known as Jersey Joe Walcott, spent a lot of time in Sphinx's camp. World Cruiserweight champ Evander Holyfield at ringside. The scene was set. Alex Wallow and I prepared to call the fight. So to the music of Emerson, Lake, and Powell, Jerry Cooney enters. Jerry Cooney, a record of 28 wins and one loss. He is viewed as a paradox. Some see him as an awkward, unproven fighter who lost his one and only difficult match to Larry Holmes. Others call him a fighter of tremendous potential who might have been and may yet be a heavyweight champion. Which way do you see him, Alex? Jimmy, could really be both of those things. I do think he's got tremendous potential, and if he can fulfill it at, this, at the age of 30 and beyond, he could still be a dominant heavyweight champion. The big key here is it's five years since Jerry got into the ring in the first big fight of his career against Larry Holmes that night in Las Vegas when he showed that he was a world-class fighter, but he just wasn't quite ready physically or mentally. And I think the real intrigue of this fight is how will this version of Jerry Cooney compare to the one that fought Holmes? What do you think? It, well, if he was a boxer, I wouldn't give him a real chance because of his lack of work in the last five years. But Jerry Cooney is a puncher, and that, that ring rust does not affect punchers as it does boxers. The reflexes and the timing and the overall skill are just not as critical to someone like Jerry who relies on his raw power. When last he fought in a spotlight this bright, he wore a full-length green robe decorated with shamrocks. Tonight, the green is on white. Jerry Cooney returns to the limelight. And now also robed in white, Michael Spinks arrives. Never beaten his 
27 fights as a light heavyweight and three as a heavyweight. Like Cooney, he is seen as being awkward in the ring, Alex, but in his case, it's widely regarded as a virtue. Also possessed of ring intelligence, in fact, called by some the smartest fighter in the sport. The biggest question which surrounds Michael Spinks, is he really a heavyweight? Does he truly think of himself as one? Jim, you know, we have Goliath in the ring, and here comes David. Michael looks calm, but when we spoke to him earlier this week, he, he really openly admitted to us that he is very concerned about facing Jerry Cooney. He said, I'm worried about how I'm going to hit him. I'm worried about what's going to happen when he hits me. And he said, there's no way to prepare yourself to face a Jerry Cooney. He's been a survivor for, for 11 years since he's been fighting professionally, and since his last amateur loss, he's always found a way to win every time he stepped in the ring. Obviously, Michael Spinks and everybody here wonders whether the tactics that he used to beat Larry Holmes not once but twice will work against a powerful giant like Jerry Cooney. So now, Spinks will step up into the ring and face the giant across 20 feet of canvas. Alex, what do you expect to happen once the bell rings in round one? Jim, I think the biggest single factor in the fight, obviously, is Cooney's power. But in the Holmes fight, Jerry was so preoccupied with his stamina and his ability to go the distance that he never really unloaded his power and took the initiative. Jerry says he learned his lesson from that fight. He'll jump on Michael from the opening bell. If Jerry Cooney can plant his feet, wind up and hit Michael Spinks, this fight is over. Michael must keep Jerry off balance. He must not let him get set. He's got to frustrate him. He's got to tire him. And he's got to hope that Jerry will fade just the way he did against Larry Holmes. But he also has to pick his spots, and he's got to generate some offense to keep Jerry from walking in without any fear. All right, Alex, the tale of the tape shows that both fighters are 30 years old. Cooney outweighed Spinks at the weigh-in by 30 pounds. The scale was regarded by many as being three or four pounds heavy. Let's say Spinks is at least 205 and Cooney at least 234. Height, a five-inch difference in Cooney's favor reach a similar dissimilarity again in Cooney's favor. And now ring announcer Ed Darian prepares to begin the festivity. In the ring at this time, the man in charge of the scheduled 15-round title bout, referee Frank Cappuccino. And now boxing fans, introducing the principals. First, in the blue corner, wearing the white trunks with the green and gold trim. He tipped in at an even 238 pounds. This gentleman has 28 wins, one loss with 24 knockouts. From Huntington, Long Island, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the challenger. Ladies and gentlemen, here 